about New York subways because I promise I'm a reasonable person. First of all, the fact that there's like one map in the entire subway station. Second, how there's like one sign in the entire station that denotes which track is uptown and which track is downtown. There should be very clear signs for that. Third, they smell. Fourth, they're hot. New York, take notes from Madrid and from what I've heard, Berlin. Please. What time are you getting your nails done? At 2.30. Like, I'm, I need to be there at 2.30. Oh, then she's, um, it's not gonna be till three or four. Right, so then I can come back here and meet with you. You're gonna come back? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Why? Just, um, to hang out with you. What else am I gonna do all day? <laughs> <laughs> When people excuse like racism as like oh but they don't like that's all they've been surrounded like they've only seen mm. white people when they grow up right and like how are they supposed to be educated in, in these things but like look at these inner city folks who have not had like half the good education as these people have had and they're like killing it they're woke they're trying to lift their communities mm. they understand intersectionalism without taking any f***ing femgen classes or you know csre classes and it, that's that's what i that's what i wonder because like these individuals who don't understand like the systems of power that they're in despite having all the opportunities to learn from that from their like $40,000 tuition right. high schools, right? Yeah, I think everyone is so shocked by the person who like graduates from Harvard Westlake and is a f***ing racist, <laughs> right? right? Well, I grew up in a homogenous white community, for the most part. It was like bulk white. I, I just don't think that people were as aware of certain issues because they just didn't see it. I mean, like, because that's the argument you make for making schools diverse, right? Like, the reason you want to get a broad representation of different races and ethnicities and religious backgrounds and all that stuff is because when you're in those environments and you're around those people, you're forced to live with them and learn with them and eat with them, and so you learn about different cultures that you otherwise would not have been aware of. And I feel like that's what I learned when I got to Stanford because before that, I just literally didn't have that opportunity. And it wasn't about like Barrington being a privileged community and like having the resources to sit me down and teach me these things. Like, could they have done that better? Yes, absolutely. But you also learn a lot more, I think, like being in that space rather than like learning it from a book because you right. can lecture me all day long about that kind of thing. But like at the end of the day, when I leave that classroom and I'm walking through the hallways with like, majority Trump supporters, like, that's the life I'm living. Mm -hmm. It's not what I'm learning in a book. And it's not until you actually enter that and have a conversation with, like, you know, someone who's a refugee, till you can, like, actually empathize with that person and have that conversation. But so the argument about, like, diverse backgrounds is, I think, placing way too much of a burden on the oppressed, quote unquote, right? It's not the responsibility of the oppressed to teach the oppressor, or, like, the unprivileged to teach the privileged. Mm -hmm. Right, I don't. I think that's that's unfair labor. Yeah, I guess it's just hard for me because while while I agree with that, and I don't think that it should be the responsibility. Like my lived experience tells me that that's where you absolutely learn yeah. the most. Yeah, maybe that's like an unfortunate, unfortunate reality. Well, I think like both of you are saying things that are true, and I think that you're right that it's not the oppressor's uh, like burden to teach other people, and yet. That's how it has been. If you are in the minority and you don't want to teach, it's not your burden and you don't have to, but step aside so that the people who do want mm. to can. Because we need allies. And some people are like, F white people, like I'm not teaching you about my experience, which is like totally valid. But when you say that to people, they stop wanting to listen to right. anyone from exactly. your group. Exactly. So totally. step aside, keep, like that's so valid. Be like that, but let the people who are there, let the, let the women, let the queer people, let the black people who want to teach you, like teach. Our high schoolers and potentially looking to start applying to colleges in a couple of months. I have a really cool opportunity that I want to share with you guys. So basically there's this app called Goodwall that is giving students just like you access to colleges all around the world. One of the biggest things that they do is that they host Q&A sessions on the app with people who can tell you information about the application process and what it's like to go to that school. The kind folks, ooh, 
That's nice, son. The kind folks over at Goodwall have set me up with a dope account that I'm gonna be using to host a Q&A next week on July 12th from 12.30 to 1 p.m. Eastern time. If you guys set up an account, which is totally free by the way, uh, you can hop into the chat with me and ask me whatever you'd like next week. So go ahead and check these guys out. They've been super good to me, so I know they'll be good to you. Um, and yeah, they're, they're really legit. They've got over a million users in 84,000 high schools all over the world. So check them out, and hopefully I'll see you guys next week. Now, I'm gonna take a nap. About cash in abundance, niggas I used to run with is rich to doing years in the hundreds. I switched my motto instead of saying fuck tomorrow, that fuck that bought a bottle, the lotto.